Today, we're gonna to take a look at the Analog to Digital Converter, or ADC, and I'm gonna show you how to use these in your embedded applications. Hey everybody, welcome back. It's been a while since I did an embedded video. In the last one, I looked at digital inputs. Those are inputs where we're measuring something that's either going to be high or low, one or zero. It's sort of an all or nothing input. And these are great for things like buttons or switches or other things that are all or nothing. But today we're gonna to talk about analog inputs. So these are inputs where you're trying to measure something that's not all the way high or all the way low, but something in between. You know, for when we want to essentially measure an analog voltage. And we typically do that using an ADC or an analog to digital converter. Now, most of your microcontrollers have a built-in ADC. There are external ADCs as well, and their whole job is to take an analog voltage and convert it into a digital value that you can use in your programs. So in this video, we're specifically going to be looking at how to use an ADC in the Arduino platform, and also we're going to look at a little more low-level bare metal version using the MSP430, two platforms that are great for hobbyists and that I use a lot in my own work. And as always, all the source code is available through Patreon. Also, I just want to let you know that I'm not going to get way down in the weeds today talking about how analog to digital converters actually work, like at the circuit level. Instead, we're going to look at how we use them and functionally how they behave, how they operate, basically as a tool that we can use in our systems. But I'm not going to get super low level. We're not going to get down to the circuit level today. For today, it's enough to view an ADC as a component that's going to take an analog voltage and it's going to produce a digital value. Now, our ADC is going to have a resolution. For example, we might have a 10-bit or a 12-bit ADC. That's the number of bits that are used to represent the output value. So a 10-bit ADC can produce 2 to the 10th or 1024 different values, and a 12-bit ADC can give you 4096 different values. So all things being equal, more bits will allow you to measure smaller voltage changes. Keep in mind, though, usually more bits also slows things down. So a 12-bit ADC may take a little bit longer to get those extra two bits. Now those values, those 4096 values that I can measure are typically spread evenly across the measurable voltage range, usually between zero volts and some reference voltage. Some ADCs have a fixed reference voltage, others give you choices and let you select the reference you wanna use. Usually VCC or the supply voltage is one of those choices. But let's look at some common values. Say I have a reference voltage of 3.3 volts and a 12-bit ADC, then I can measure voltages between zero and 3.3 volts, and I can measure 4096 different values. So that means that my resolution is about 0 0.0008 volts or 0.8 millivolts. Now that seems pretty small and it is. This is going to work for a lot of different scenarios. That is why this is a common combination of settings. Now, if I wanted to measure more precisely than that, I'm going to need a lower reference voltage or more bits of resolution. Okay, so now let's look at how this works in a real example. So for today's example, I'm going to use a little homemade light sensor that I just put together and an Arduino. The basic setup looks like this. I have my Arduino Uno and that's gonna drive the whole thing. And over here, I have a small breadboard with a photoresistor. That's a resistor that changes its resistance in response to the amount of light that's hitting it. And to turn this photoresistor into a light sensor, I made a resistor divider with 3.3 volts on top, ground on the bottom. And what this is going to do is produce a voltage here in the middle that is going to change as the light level changes. And I'm gonna wire that middle point to one of the Arduino's analog pins which are pins that can be used to connect to my Arduino's ADC. That's why they're called analog pins. Okay, so now let's jump into the code and see what we need to do to measure this sensor. Okay, so for this, we could write a beautiful new from scratch program, but really there's a nice example that ships with Arduino and you can find it in under the file menu in examples, basics, and analog read serial. So that's this program right here. Now, let me just run through it really quick, what it's doing. Those of you that are familiar with Arduino know that instead of main, you have this setup that does all the initialization, basically anything that needs to happen at the beginning of your program. So right here, we're just initializing the serial module that's going to allow us to communicate data up to my laptop. And then down here in loop, this is what runs over and over again. And all we're going to do is we're basically going to call analog read on pin A0, that's analog zero, and that's the one that we connected our sensor to, and it's going to return an integer, which is gonna be saved as sensor value, and then this serial.println is basically just going to send that value up to my laptop, 
And then I put a delay in here just to keep things stable because it takes a little while to actually send that data up the line and I don't wanna just keep hammering it. Okay, so now let's go up and just make sure that my board's connected. It is, so let's compile this. Should be fine and we'll program it. Okay, now we can come over here and open up our serial monitor and we can see what values are coming up. So you can see we're getting numbers right around 392, 391, somewhere in there. If I put my finger over the sensor, you notice that we drop significantly down to the you know, 158 range. But so this allows me to measure how much light is, is hitting this. Now, another tool for those of you that may not be familiar with Arduino, if, if seeing all these numbers fly by isn't as helpful, one thing that you can also do is come up to tools and view the serial plotter. Okay, so this basically takes those values that were coming in and basically plots them. So right here, you can see those same values. You can see when I come in here and actually like touch the sensor, you can see that it goes up and down. And if we turn up the light, you can see that like, wow, okay, you know, I'm turning up my lights and the value just keeps getting higher and higher and we can turn down the lights. And so it basically is a sensor. It's basically telling us how much is hitting and I can actually remember where my lights were and I can use that to reset the values. Okay, now you can see that I'm getting numbers and these numbers, these are my ADC counts. Okay, they don't really have units. They're just basically a number between zero and in this case, 1024, because I believe I'm in 10 bit mode. So things are working and my ADC is converting those analog voltages to digital values, just like we wanted. But as always, Arduino just makes everything seem so easy, almost magical but we wanna know what's really going on in that analog read function. So let's take a look at another example without the Arduino framework on top of it. For this one, I'm gonna use the MSP430 FR5994, another microcontroller board that I just have lying around. I've been using a lot these days, so we're going to use it in this example. And here we're gonna use the same sensor and basically the same setup, except that, of course, the pins are gonna to have to be a little different because it's a different microcontroller. So we're gonna wire the sensor output to pin 1.3, which is one of this MSP430's ADC capable pins. You gotta make sure you read your data sheet so that you know which ones can be connected to the ADC. Okay, so let's take a look at the code. Now, if you haven't seen Embedded C before, or if this is the first of my embedded videos that you've ever watched, there may be some stuff here that you haven't seen. Those other videos are linked in the description. Please do check them out, they might be helpful. But okay, moving on, let me take you through this example really quickly. What I'm gonna to try to do here is do something just a little different rather than just looking at the values from my light sensor. I wanna actually do something with it. So I have three constants here set up. One is going to be the reference. Basically, I'm using 3.3 volts, which is 33, which I can't talk today, which is 3300 millivolts. I also have the threshold. So what I'm gonna do here is basically have something happen when my light level goes above a volt or below a volt. And we're gonna convert from ADC counts to millivolts. So I'm going to keep track of how many bits of resolution we have here, which is 12. Okay, now I have three functions here. I'm gonna go through each of them. The first one is ADC config. That's basically just gonna set up our ADC. The next one is ADC read. That's going to take a specific, just a single reading. And then this third one basically just converts my ADC counts, the reading I got from the ADC to millivolts. Now that of course is optional. I could just specify my threshold in ADC counts, but I just wanted to show you how we can convert from the counts that the ADC gives us to millivolts using the information that we know about the reference voltage and the ADC resolution. And then down here in main, you notice our program is really simple. Basically, we, we have to stop the watchdog timer and this incantation, those of you that have seen my other videos, it basically goes at the beginning of just about every MSP430 program, unless you wanna use the watchdog timer, but you get used to seeing it there. The next thing we're gonna do is set up an LED. Basically, all we're gonna do is we're gonna make this so it's kinda of like a smart flashlight that detects when the lights are off and it turns the light on only when it's dark, so you don't waste your battery, I guess. So what we're doing here is we're setting pin 1.0 to be an output and we're clearing it, we basically set it to be low so that the light will be off. Now why pin 1.0? It's because that's actually the pin on the board that's wired to the onboard LED, but I could use any pin on this board that I wanted to wire up to something that I wanted to be turned on when the light level changes. Then we're going to configure our ADC, basically set it up so we can take measurements, 
And then here we just have an infinite loop where we're going to have a delay. We're gonna wait for a little while, in this case, a certain number of cycles. Of course, I'm doing this for simplicity, for demonstration purposes. Check out my video on how to use timers if you wanna use timers, which is definitely the more energy efficient option and CPU efficient option. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an ADC reading by calling ADC read, and then I'm going to convert the counts that I get from ADC read to millivolts and save that in this variable MV. And then I'm just going to test to see if MV is under the threshold that I set above. Remember that was one volt. And if it is under that threshold, if it's darker than a certain threshold, then we're going to turn our LED on and otherwise we're going to turn it off. Okay, so really simple, really simple example. But let's take a look at how we actually set up this ADC. So let's jump up the ADC config Basically, there's a handful of things we have to do here. The first is we had to tell our pin, we had to say, hey, pin 1.3, that's the pin that we're actually hooking up to the ADC. We need to actually tell it here. By setting bits in two different registers, we're telling it that we want pin 1.3 to be used with the ADC to measure our sensor. Now, I listed temperature here. You can tell I've used this for temperature in the past, but let's change it to light because that's what we're actually doing. Now down here is where we actually configure our ADC. Now the ADC actually has a bunch of different parameters you can set. I'm not going to go into all of them, but let's just go through a few of them. So one, we're setting the clock source that's coming in. So in the MSP430's ADC system, you can actually select different clocks to actually drive the ADC as it works. It's basically, it needs a clock because it's working one bit at a time. And so it's using this sample timer. This is the most common one, but you can use other clocks. We're gonna set a couple of things. First, we're gonna set the sample and hold time, and then we're gonna turn our ADC on. Then down here, we're also going to tell it to work in 12-bit mode. This ADC can work in 10-bit or 12-bit mode. I wanna use 12 right now. And then down here, finally, we're going to tell it that we want to use VCC as our reference. So that's gonna be 3.3 volts, and hence my pound of fine up at the top. And this is all I have to do to basically set my ADC up to take a reading. Now let's look at what happens when we actually wanna take a reading. Basically, it looks very similar. We've got this ADC 12 control zero. So pretty much you notice we're writing to the same basic configuration registers. So basically here, we're just gonna OR in a couple more bits, which signals the hardware that it's time to start taking a conversion. And then down here below, we're basically just going to wait until we get the result we want. Basically this ADC 12 CTL one register has a particular bit, this ADC 12 busy bit, and we're just gonna check to see how long it takes until that actually becomes a one. So as soon as it is, we know that our conversion is done. And then we can grab the result of our ADC conversion from this ADC 12 mem zero register. Now this is one way to do it. This is probably the simplest way to do it, but rather than having a busy while loop, we could be getting other stuff done. We could be doing other computation while it converts. The other thing that we can do is we can have the ADC actually trigger an interrupt for us. Maybe I'll cover that in a future video, but this is what we're gonna do today. Now, finally, if we come down here and look at our counts to millivolts, all this is doing is basically taking the number of ADC counts basically multiplying it by our reference voltage in millivolts. Now I'm doing this because it's integer multiplication and I don't wanna lose precision. And then once we're done, we're basically going to divide it by one shifted to the left 12 bits or 4096. So we're basically saying we know it has a resolution of 4096. And so you multiply it by the reference voltage and then divide by 4096 to get the number of millivolts that is the equivalent of this measurement. And that's basically our program. So we're going to now gather measurements over and over again. We're gonna convert them to millivolts and we're gonna to check to see if that light level is below one volt. And if it is, then we're gonna turn the light on. And if it's not, then we turn the light off. So just to make sure it works, I'm going to use my rake file to compile it. That seems fine. If you haven't seen rake, basically uh, this is the same rake file that I used in my previous MSP430 videos. So feel free to check it out there. I'll link in the description. And as always, code is available through Patreon. And we can install our compiled binary. With any luck, this will go onto our device just fine. Okay, so we compiled it and now we can come over here to our device and we can see sure enough, if I cover up the sensor, if things get dark, you know, as the light comes on, if I let off the sensor, then things are bright and the light turns off. So this is how we designed it to work. So now we're using our ADC to basically measure our sensor and do something in response. And using an ADC is something that you really need to have in your toolkit as an embedded developer. 
And so I'm glad we could go over it. If you like this video, make sure to check out my other embedded videos. Also, some of my other C videos might come in handy. Subscribe if you don't wanna miss my next video. And until then, I'll see you all later.